Yo, what's going on? In today's video, I got the how to make a summoner slash necromancy or necromancer, um, you know, type of ability. This video was requested to me, or this idea was requested. Uh, I want to say like a about like a month and a half, two months ago, and stuff. So yeah, let me go ahead and say thank you guys for eight thousand subscribers because I'm not uh, like I'm like a hundred away, but like I feel like around the time I drop this video, I'll be at eight thousand. So thank you guys for eight thousand subscribers. We are two thousand away from ten. 10,000 so yeah but anyways let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so first things first of course we're going to you know need an enemy an enemy npc right so let me click avatar i mean you guys can get one from the you know the, the uh the toolbox or if you make one or whatever it doesn't matter but i'm just gonna you know just drop in a rig right you're gonna want to rename it to enemy npc if you watch my video on how to make an uh like the updated version of how to make an enemy npc you'll notice that there are some similarities here it's literally just the same thing except summoning involved yeah like there's summoning being involved so we're going to go ahead and put the enemy npc inside the server storage um so for the summoning part i got a summon circle from a summoning circle from the toolbox and stuff i'll have a link to the, the to where i got the circle from in the description and stuff so you guys can see where i got the uh summoning circle from not that one this one right so you guys can see where i got it from so you guys can get it too right so i did make some changes to it so first things first you want to name the model to summon circle right then we're going to change some things uh you want to select all the mesh parts you want to first make them all transparent uh disable can collide enable anchored so it's you know it's anchored um you want to rename the mesh part that has the attachment of point line parented to it literally name it anything that's not the same as the other two names so but i'm just going to mesh part two right because we need to be able to reference the surface light and the point light so you want to select those two and you want to disable them so boom like it you know it's like it doesn't exist we're going to enable them slowly so we're going to then drop this out of server storage boom right i also have a sound instead of sound service uh i named it summon so there we go um you could just search the toolbox for you know summon type sounds and just you know choose one you like but yeah, let's go ahead and create our remote event. So head on over to replicated storage, insert a remote event. You're going to want to rename said remote event combat event, right? Then let's open up starter player, insert a local script into starter player scripts, right? And we're going to want to rename the script to combat script and parentheses put local, oh, local, boom. Right, you know, we're gonna delete our print hello world and then let's go ahead and get straight into the scripting. Just we won't spend too much time on the local script because most of the time spent will be on the server script. So, first things first, let's get the user input service. We're gonna say local UIS is equal to game get service, user input service, right? Then we're gonna get the combat remote event. So, let's say local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. Right. Then we're gonna set up our function. We're gonna say UIS that input began connect function and parentheses put input comma processed enter. Then you're gonna say if input that user input type is equal to enum that user input type that keyboard and not processed, which pretty much means the player is not typing in chat. Enter. Then you're gonna say if input that key code is equal to enum that key code. That's so for me. I always go with the E keybind, but you guys know whatever keybind you want. So E, enter there, we're going to fire the remote event. We're going to say combat event, fire server, in quotation marks. You're going to put summon. That's a, that would be the name of the event. And then that's it for the local script. We can then move to server script service and insert our server script, right? You're going to go ahead and rename the script to combat script. Right, this is you're going to put server. I do have a walk animation for the NPC, which I'm going to parent to the server script. You can just click the plus icon, type animation rename it and throw your animation ID in there this is optional this is for the npc while they're walking you guys don't have to have this but this is just what i included but yeah moving on let's go ahead and delete print hello world and let's get our variables so first things first we're going to get the tween service we're going to say local ts is equal to game get service tween service then we're going to get the sound service local ss is equal to game get service sound service right then we're going to just copy and paste the combat event variable from the local script so control c control v boom now let's get started on our first function we're going to say combat event dot not server event connect function in parentheses put plr which is short for the player comma event type right then enter you're going to create a variable for the player's character local character is equal to player dot character then you're going to set up an if statement you're going to say if, if event type is equal to quotation marks 
summon i look i forgot what, what we named the event anyway summon enter then we're going to make it so the player cannot walk so that the summon circle is right on like you know right underneath their feet so i'm going to say character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to zero to stop them in the place then we're going to wait zero. we're going to wait half a second just to ensure that you know it's it uh is it it's in the right position or the c frame is correct i should say so then i'm going to say some so then i'm going to uh clone over the summon circle actually i'm going to clone it over before um for the wait but yeah so i'm gonna say local summon circle is equal to game that server storage dot summon circle well we're gonna clone it over and then we're actually gonna move it over after the wait i'm gonna say summon circle pivot to character dot now here's where i want to clarify something if you're using r15 which is i'm using r15 you're going to put a right foot now if you were using r6 you are going to want to do you know right or left leg so you would do regular brackets quotation marks and then you do like right leg or left leg that's how you do it if you're doing r6 but i'm using r15 so i'm going to do it like this right foot right i just want to clarify that for people you can also do left foot if you if you want that's up to you so c frame right and then finally we're going to parent it to the workspace so you know parent to workspace then we're going to set up the tween we're going to say four i comma v in pairs you know since the summon circle this is a group model and there's a whole there's multiple parts inside of it we're going to need to get the children so let's say summon circle get children enter you're then going to set up the summon tween local summon tween which is we're going to use utilize the tween service ts create put the you're going to put a v for the instance comma tween info dot new I went with two seconds, so two comma enum dot easing style dot linear comma enum dot easing direction dot out. Then put a comma in between the parentheses. Boom. Then create a table using special brackets, and then we're going to make it make it so they're no longer transparent. So transparency is equal to zero, and then you're going to play the sum between right. Then you're going to go after the four IV and pair loop, and then you're going to say sum and circle. This is why I said it was important that you name the one that has the attachment of light. A different name you're going to go mesh part two dot attachment dot surface light enabled is equal to true then same thing some part dot mesh part two dot point light sorry mesh part two dot point light dot enabled is equal to true right now that all that's enabled we're going to wait we're going to test that wait 1.5 seconds so a second and a half then i'm going to clone over the enemy NPC. right i'm going to say local enemy npc is equal to same thing game the server storage dot enemy npc clone right then i'm going to say enemy npc pivot to character dot humanoid root part dot c frame we want to be in front of the character so we're going to say time c frame dot new negative one comma negative one comma negative ten right then we're going to say um enemy npc dot parent is equal to workspace then I'm going to um, play the summon sound. So ss.summon play. And then I'm going to set the character's walk speed back to normal since we don't really need the summon circle anymore. I'm going to say character.humanoid.walk speed is equal to 16 or whatever your default walk speed is. Then we're going to just copy and paste here for some time. So just we want to control C all of this, control C, control, oh, sorry control v right and then this is some between two so just change that to two all this stays the same except for you want this to be in you want to change the time from two seconds to 1.5 seconds and then transparency is you know of course one right and then change it to true both choose to false right control c control v we no longer want the summon circle to be visible right and then um let me just go ahead and let me just go ahead and set up the function i guess for yeah let me say this uh i don't want to okay yeah no man i'll just do that then actually okay so then i'm going to create the animation track for the npc again this is if you wanted to include you know have a walking have you know animation playing for them but that's optional like i said so we're going to say local at is equal to enemy npc that humanoid right and then we're going to say that animator load animation. Remember, this is how we load animations now. Then you say script, regular bracket, quotation marks, walk animation. Then you're going to say T play, right? Make sure your uh, whatever the type you're using, you know, the whether it's the R type you're using matches the animation. Like if it's an R6 animation, you have to be using R6 models.
and stuff, right? Right, R6, you know, NPC model. Then we're just gonna create a hitbox so that, you know, we can do damage and stuff. So we're gonna say local hitbox, you either another drill is equal to instance.new, blah, blah, blah. Part, parent this to the enemy NPC's humanoid root part, boom. Then you're gonna say hitbox.name is equal to quotation marks, hitbox, okay, that is not capital H. Hitbox, enter, then let's set these properties. Hitbox.anchored is equal to false, hitbox Massless is equal to true. Hitbox that can collide is equal to false. Hitbox that transparency is equal to one unless you're testing. Hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new. Then you're gonna say one comma zero comma zero. This is for if you are uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I just realized I did realize what I said. Sorry. Hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new. Yeah, sorry. I did realize what I said. I got size and color mixed up. So this size is five, six, and 2.5 yeah that size then hitbox that color is equal to color three dot new one comma zero comma zero just when you're testing then you're going to pivot it so hitbox pivot to character i'm sorry not character um enemy npc dot humanoid root part dot c frame right and then lastly we're going to weld it together so local weld constraint is equal to instance that new weld constraint you're going to want to parent this to the hitbox and then you're going to say world constraint that part zero is equal to hitbox then world constraint that part one is equal to enemy npc dot humanoid root part and then lastly we're going to call the enemy function but to call that we would have to first create it so let's just simply create an enemy function so we're going to say function enemy i wanted to now i really do this honestly now i used to do this before but i don't i really do this now but i did this because since this is going to be a while loop i wanted to include then in a whole different function so that it wouldn't causing issues with like holding up this the summoning function so that they could summon as many enemies as they want you know so yeah so after this after you know we weld it we're going to call the enemy function and we need to attach the enemy npc so we need to send that over so enemy npc and then you can just control c control v boom right there so we can access it now we're just gonna program it so that it chases around the closest uh it chases around the closest player in or, or NPC, I guess. But I think it's, I think I made it just for players, but anyway. So we're gonna say while enemy npc dot humanoid dot health is greater than is greater than zero. You know, obviously you wouldn't want it chasing you know, chasing somebody that's you know, chasing somebody while it's dead. Or the loop running while while they're dead. You're gonna say local you're gonna create a variable, local closest player is equal to no by default we'll set that and then we're going to create our minimum distance so minimum distance you can set it if you want but i'm just going to go with math that huge right then i'm going to set up a four i loop i'm going to say four i comma v in pairs game dot players get children enter right i'm going to create a variable for our player's character or for like you know all the characters right or not one variable for all characters but a variable for each character so v dot character right then we're going to set up an if statement. We're going to say if character, right? So if, if we can find a character, then we're going to calculate the distance. We're going to say local distance. We can, you know, see who's closest. So special, I mean, sorry, regular parentheses, right? I'm going to say enemy NPC dot humanoid root part dot position minus character dot humanoid root part dot position. But on the outside, you're going to say that magnitude is less sorry not less than we're actually we're actually comparing that down here we're going to do that but we're comparing it down here we're going to say if distance yeah i don't know how to do it like this but anyway distance is less than minimum distance into then you're going to say minimum distance is equal to distance right then you're going to say closest player is equal to v and then you're going to say enemy npc dot humanoid move to right closest player and see closest player dot character dot humanoid root part dot position right and then we're going to set up the ray casting to actually do damage so i'm going to say local start position is of course you know equal to the enemy npcs humanoid root part dot hitbox hitbox dot position then for our direction same thing enemy npc dot humanoid root part that hitbox but this time we're gonna say that c frame dot look vector then let's set up the raycast params local raycast params is equal to raycast params that new close parentheses 
Then we're going to set the properties raycast params dot filter type is equal to enum dot filter dot raycast filter type dot exclude. Then raycast params dot filter descendants instances is equal to special brackets. Then you're going to say enum npc get descendants, right? Then we can cast array. I'm going to say create a variable local array is equal to workspace raycast the start position comma direction and our raycast params right then you can set up an if statement you're going to say if ray and ray dot instance and ray dot instance dot parent that name is of course equal to you know closest player that name enter right and if that's the case create a variable for the enemy character enemy character is equal to ray that instance that parent i want to talk about something in a minute so i'm going to say enemy character that humanoid that health is less than equal to five okay so set it to have however much damage you want to do and then for the last thing we're going to do you're going to go uh you're going to skip four ends and go you know second to right before the second to last end you're going to throw in a task that way because of course you know this is a wild loop so you don't want to crash the server so i did every 0 0.3 seconds so i do want to talk about something okay so first things first if you notice here with the if statement for dealing damage um the, I left it the way it is because we need it like this to test. Now, in an actual game, right, you need to ensure that when you're when you're looking for the closest player, right, you need to ensure when you're doing this, you want to say if character and oh wait, I, and I just realized something. Okay, we actually need to modify the code. I actually forgot to do this. I'm sorry, guys. So we're also going to send over the players. We're also going to send over the players instance, right? So then you're going to say comma player, right, and then you're going to say if character character and player and character dot name is nil equal to player dot name right you want to you want to do that this so that like the the enemies they summon don't you know chase them you know why don't you, you want to summon something that would chase you you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna i'm gonna take this out simply because we need it um i need to like this so we can actually test it to ensure it works but i'm gonna come back to uh at this though okay i forgot to copy and paste it you know it's fine but yeah so we need it like that so that uh we can actually test it and another thing which i'm about to show you guys in a minute is you'll notice that when it comes when it you know comes after me so first let me press e bond circle as you can see animated in sound plays it disappears right you guys can see it chases me oh i guess that oh i guess that walk animation must have been r6 okay but if you notice right um so it's supposed to be damaging me huh does it have its hitbox yes but where is the hitbox Zero. oh no it's there huh strange let me see if ray and radar instance and radar instance dot parent dot name is equal to closest player dot name ray dot instance dot parent enemy character dot... huh that's strange Oh wait, oh it killed me. Oh no, oh wait, okay. I'm just I'm not seeing it do Oh there we go, there we go. okay. So the so as you guys can clearly see, you see how you notice it's glitched, like it can do damage to me sometimes and stuff. The reason for that is because I don't have a hitbox, right? You know, perfect combat entails that both whoever's attacking you and you have a hitbox. If I had a hitbox, it'd be more reliable. Like doing it like this isn't isn't reliable, you know, for better results I'll be for better results you would want to have a hitbox too but you know obviously in your full game you would have everybody has a hitbox so if i had a hitbox it would be more reliable i just wanted to clarify that if you're experiencing like you know uh issues with it not damaging you and stuff but yeah so yeah that's how you make a um uh thing what was this oh summoner necromancy ability stuff so remember just do and character that name is now you get to player that name right and then we can go ahead and test this to make sure. As always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or mods, so you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description and stuff. So let me see. Okay, so if I, yeah, there we go. If I spawn, it won't chase me because I'm the only player in the server, but my name matches, you know, because I'm the summoner. So yeah, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you all for watching.